The most important position on defense, other than the pitcher, is the catcher, and it's not close. Nobody else is directly involved in every play, and their influence can be found in almost every part of any given pitch. In recent years, pitch framing has been one of the most sought-after skills for catchers, and it's something coaches have been hard at work trying to teach their catchers. Framing, for those unfamiliar, is the act of using fancy glove work to make a ball appear to be a strike to the umpire. It may seem like a small, gimmicky aspect of a catcher's game, but it's actually a huge part of catcher's quantifiable value. Just to illustrate this, let's show the difference between Baseball Reference's war calculation, which does not include framing metrics, and Fangrass's war, which does. The consensus top two catchers of the decade, Buster Posey and Yadier Molina, are both about 20% better by F4, but players like Yasmani Grandal, Tyler Flowers, and Jonathan Lucroy have their value doubled by including pitch framing. It's an absolutely massive difference. So in the macro, framing is huge. But let's zoom in a little bit. How do these war numbers get so high, and what is the value of turning a single ball into a strike? To figure this out, we need to take a look at the close cousin of a friend of the channel, the run expectancy matrix, which measures how many runs are scored on average in every out and base runner situation. The next level of detail in expectancy matrices concerns counts, and the average outcome in every possible ball strike count in an at-bat, instead of outs and base runners at the start of an at-bat. Just a heads up, there's a lot of math coming up, so if that's not really your thing, you can skip to this timestamp. Alright, now the losers are gone, let's get to work. Here is the count run value matrix, based on 2014 numbers. It uses WOBA, or weighted on base average, which is a hitting stat that takes power and plate discipline into account similar to OPS, but it has more detail. Just like OPS is the unadjusted form of OPS+, WOBA is the unadjusted form of WRC+. The first entry into the matrix is the league average WOBA, since it's the average at the start of a 0-0 count, which is every at-bat. The next two columns show the resulting average WOBA if the 0-0 pitch is called a strike, where it goes down, and a ball, where it would go up. The delta columns show the overall change in WOBA from each outcome in the count, and this is the most important part, the run value column. Basically, what makes WOBA cool is that you can divide it by a yearly scale to find the total runs contributed per plate appearance. So this means we can use the matrix to determine the change in run expectancy for each ball and strike call, which is represented in the run value column. For example, a 1-1 count starts with an average WOBA of 293. If the pitch is a strike, that goes down to 223, and if it's a ball, it goes up to 352. Split the difference between those two, then divide by the 2014 WOBA scale, and we can see that the difference between a ball and a strike in this count is worth a tenth of a run. In other words, if a pitcher throws a ball in a 1-1 count, but the catcher frames that pitch and tricks the umpire into calling it a strike, they're directly responsible for saving their team by a tenth of a run. To find the average value of framing a pitch in any given count, we can just look at the WOBA change of each count, adjust that for the frequency of that count, and find a mean run value. With that, we can see that in 2014, a frame strike on average was worth 0.135 runs. But 2014 had the lowest run scoring environment of the last decade, with a league average WOBA of 0.31. The more runs that are scored on average, the more value framing a strike has, so if we proportion this value to 2020's league average WOBA of 0.32, then we can estimate the value of a frame strike in 2020 was about 0.139 runs. That's pretty significant, but to appreciate how important it is, we need to see how often pitches actually get framed by good catchers. And that is where our story's protagonist, Austin Barnes, comes in. Barnes has been the Dodgers' backup catcher for most of the last four years, with some opportunities to start, but for the most part taking a backseat to better hitters like Ismani Grandal and Will Smith. You see, Austin Barnes is not a good hitter. He can take a walk, but that's about it, with around a 10th percentile exit velocity and barrel percentage at the plate. It's reflected in his career numbers, which are buoyed by an excellent 2017, but have been pretty terrible for the rest of his career. Despite this though, since 2017, his first year of real playing time, Austin Barnes is 4th in baseball in war per plate appearance for catchers with at least 500 plate appearances. It's a sort of cherry-picked range, but it illustrates that if he was given the chance to start, Barnes would probably be an above-average catcher in the majors, despite his shortcomings at the plate. And it's not because he's particularly good at blocking, or base running, and definitely not throwing out runners. No, almost all of this value is from pitch framing. In 2020, Austin Barnes was third in baseball in non-swinging strike rate with 52.6%, which is 4.3% better than league average. He was top 5 in the league in 2018 as well, with a strike rate 4% better than league average. For context, about 46% of pitches were swung at in 2020, and there were an average of 147 pitches thrown per game per team. 
So in an average of 69 opportunities to frame a pitch, an average catcher will have 33.3 .3 of them called a strike. But Barnes will frame an average of 36 and a quarter pitches, or just under 3 pitches better than average per game. If we plug that into our run value estimate of 0.139 runs per ball turned into a strike, then Barnes' catching is worth an average of 0.41 runs above average per full game caught, which is pretty substantial. Prorated to 162 games, that's 66 runs over the course of the season, or more realistically, if he catches 60 full games, he'll add almost 25 runs of value, which is huge. Barnes isn't quite on the level of elite pitch framers like Tyler Flowers and Austin Hedges, but he does his job as a defense-first backup catcher perfectly. What makes him even more valuable is the Dodgers' starting catcher Will Smith was one of the worst pitch framers in the league in 2020, so Barnes is the ideal player to come in as a defensive sub late in close games. He's truly the ideal backup catcher, and you saw it in the World Series last year, where instead of playing guys like Edwin Rios or AJ Pollock at DH, Dave Roberts elected to start Barnes in four of the six World Series games, shifting Will Smith to DH, showing he valued Barnes' superior framing over more offense in the lineup in the most important games of the season. We've established that framing is important in today's game, so let's address the elephant in the room. Framing might not exist in five years. It's entirely possible MLB will fully adopt the automated strike zone that can call balls and strikes with 100% accuracy and makes framing an obsolete skill. So, well, is this good for baseball? Well, it's not good for Austin Barnes, but as much as it hurts me to say, it's probably a net positive for the game. All the numbers I used to show why framing is extremely important can also be used to prove how much impact a terrible home plate umpire has on a game, so eliminating that aspect of human error will definitely improve the fan experience and reduce frustration. But when the inevitable robo-umps arrive, I'll definitely be sad to see glove-first catchers push to the side. It's the kind of niche archaic skill that really separates baseball from other major sports, so I'll always have a spot in my heart for Austin Barnes and the ability to frame a pitch. Thanks for sticking around. This one was a little more math heavy than my usual fare, but I enjoyed making it, so let me know if you enjoyed it as well. Liking and subscribing would be much appreciated too, since only about 20% of my viewers are subscribed. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.